Hi, you guys. Today I'm here with problem 4.45 from Ingrid Friedemann's University Physics textbook. So this is a forces problem. Before I get started, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos, if you think they're helpful. If they're not, then I'm sorry about that. Also, I started an Instagram um, like handle for this channel and I thought, you know, maybe I could post some things if enough people follow. So yeah, if you want to follow, please go ahead and do that. But more importantly, please don't forget to like and subscribe and share with your friends if you think my videos are useful. Thank you so much. Okay, so a, um, okay, boxes A and B are connected to each end of a light vertical rope. A constant upward force F is equal to 80 Newton is applied to box A. Starting from rest, box B descends 12.0 meters in four seconds. The tension in the rope connecting the two boxes is 36.0 newtons. What are the masses of A box B and B box A? Awesome. Okay. So, okay. So with this problem, let's go ahead. And since we already have a diagram, let's go ahead and kind of talk about it. So we have this force F. So we have this force F. I'm gonna, just going to choose a color that I like. Okay. So we have force F, and that is equal to 80.0 newtons. And this is box A right over here. This is box B. But what it looks like is that box B is descending, which means it's moving downwards. That's moving downwards. Okay. And we see that there's a lot of numbers, so it would be more beneficial if we can go ahead and break these down as our knowns. So let's do that. So knowns. So what we know is that there's a constant upward force of F is equal to 80.0 newtons. And that's applied to box A. Okay, starting from rest, box B, so VI, that means rest, is 0, 0.0 meters per second, or 0 meters per second, not 0, 0.0, but 0 meters per second. And it descends 12 meters. Okay, so here's something really interesting. Now, if you remember how in when we, whenever we did problems for projectile motion and 2D motion, I always said to set some coordinate system, right? So I always said, well, most of the time I said, or I think always in my questions, it was always like this, right? So in forces, we, we have to do that too. We have to set some sort of coordinate system. But what's really useful is to set the coordinate system in the direction of the motion, right? So if we're moving downwards, it would be really helpful to make downwards positive and to make upwards negative, just because that's the direction everything's already moving in, right? But you could also do it the other way. It's just going to be a ton of more negative signs for you. But we're going to do it this way for this question. Okay, so F is equal to 12, it, it, oh, sorry. So this distance, right, it's going to descend 12 meters, but because we said downwards is positive, we're just going to write this distance is equal to 12.0 meters. And this change of time is equal to 4.00 seconds. The tension in this rope, right, is 36. So we're going to say FT is equal to 36.0 newtons. And we're looking for what mass of A is and what mass of B is. We don't know. We have no idea what those are, but we're going to figure that out in this question. Okay, so now that we have our knowns, our next step, our next logical step, when we have some sort of forces question, especially when it looks like this, is to draw our individual force body diagrams. So let's start with A. So A is this box right over here. I'm just gonna make sure that my, okay, okay, perfect. So A is, so for A, what are the forces that are on, working on A? Well, there's this F, right? There is also this FG 
and there's this FT. Okay, so those are all the forces that are on A, right? Because there's gravity pulling it down, there's tension because of this rope right over here. And there is some force pulling it upwards. All right, so now what about B? For B, we have FT, right? So we have this. And we have FG, right? There's nothing else. But yeah, so those are our two individual force body diagrams for this problem. Now, what's the next step? The next step is to go ahead. So I'm just going to go ahead and say this is like, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and write down in blue, like one, two, and then you can do like a little squiggly line and we can do three, right? So the third step is let's write down our equations. And what do I mean that? But uh, by that, I mean, let's look at box B first, right? And re let's write down the, the equation for the forces that are on box B. So the total force on B is going to be equal to, so it's going to be F G, right? because downward is positive, minus Ft, because upward is negative. And that is going to be equal to the mass of box B times the acceleration of box B, right? Or the acceleration of the system, same thing. So let's go ahead and look at our knowns and see what we have and what we need, all right? Actually, more importantly, we can go ahead and note and note that, yeah, looking at our knowns, that FG isn't in here, right? We have, we don't even have M yet. We're looking for that. So let's go ahead and rewrite this. It's going to be MG times gravity. Or sorry, not M. Let me just rewrite that. It's going to be M times G, right? So the mass of B times gravity, acceleration due to gravity minus FT is equal to MBA, right? So the mass of the box times acceleration. Now, let's go ahead and collect like terms, right? So we can, we can isolate for MB because that's what we're solving for. So it's going to be MBG minus A is equal to FT. Correct? So I skipped one step, but you should be able to figure that out on your own, hopefully. Okay, and now we, yeah, now we need to do MB is equal to FT, and then it's going to be G minus A. Perfect. Okay, so we have FT, right? So that's right over here. We have A. Or do we have A? No, we do not, but we have G. But interestingly enough, we have the I, we have D, and we have T. So we can use that, we can use these three to get A. And how are we gonna do that? Using the kinematic equations, of course, right? So it's going to be, it's going to be this equation. So which equation has all of the terms that we need? And we need to find A. So we're going to isolate for A. But before we can cross this out, because the I is zero, so it's going to be D is equal to half of A T squared. And two times D divided by T squared is equal to A. And our acceleration, when we plug in our values, is going to be I am getting 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay, I'm just gonna double check because I don't wanna make a mistake and carry it through. I've done that in some of my past videos and it's so hard to make corrections afterwards.
Okay, so yeah, 1.5 meters per second squared. Okay, so why did we get uh, why did we get acceleration? Why did we solve for acceleration? Well, because we need it for this portion right over here. So now we have acceleration and we can plug that in, right? And I'm just gonna do that in a different color just so that it pops a little bit. But we can do FT, which is 36.0 Newton, Newtons. And divided by 9.8, right? Because we said that 9.8 is going to be positive. And minus the acceleration, right? Because, yep, yeah, because this is going to be 1.5. Because there's a minus sign there. And then we solved acceleration as 1.5. And that becomes 9.8 minus 1.5. And then 36 divided by that number. And I am getting 4.34 kilograms. That's the number that I'm getting. And yeah, that's consistent with my notes. Okay, so for A, for box B, it's going to be 4.34 kilograms. Awesome, so we solved part A of this question. Now for part B. I'm just gonna go ahead and erase all of this. Okay, so now let's do part B, which is box A. I just cannot get over how gorgeous this color is. That's why I'm saving it, saving it for last. Okay, so now for part B, what are all the forces that are on A? So again, we're gonna do the exact same thing. The forces that are on A are going to be Fg plus Ft minus F, right? Because again, we said this is positive and this is negative. And that's going to be the mass of A times the acceleration of the system, right? And sorry, I should actually write that down here. We said it was 1.5 meters per second squared. Awesome. So now what we're looking for is mass of A. What is the mass of A? So let's just go ahead and again, note that we can rewrite Fg as Mag, right? Plus Ft minus F is equal to Ma times acceleration. And again, we can go ahead and isolate for Ma. So let's do Mag minus Maa is equal to F minus FT. And I'm just gonna make sure that that's correct because it's so easy to mess up with one, with one like you write down negative instead of positive or positive instead of negative with one sign and then it just gives you the wrong answer. So re be really careful. So MAG minus MA is equal to F minus FT. Okay, yeah, that looks right. But if anything goes wrong, I know just to look over this section again. Okay. So MA is going to be G minus A. And then it's going to be F minus FT. Okay. So let's isolate for MA. It's going to be F minus FT over G minus A. And MA is equal to 80 minus 36 over 9.8 minus 1.5. And when I plug that into my calculator, I'm just gonna write that down again. Forty four. Okay.
5.30 kilograms. Okay. So that is the mass of box A. So that's the end of our question. And that wasn't too bad, right? I always find that if you do if you do it systematically, if you follow all the steps that I did, these questions are so much easier because I had a huge phobia of forces questions. Okay. Anyways, so that's that's the end of this problem. Those are our answers. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or send me an email. And um, yeah, please don't forget to like and subscribe if this was useful. And don't forget to follow on Instagram. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.